What up guys, this is Zach Morris. In my video today, I'm going to explain why I decided to buy a seven-year-old camera to make blogs with and why this would be worth getting and other cameras would not be and why this is best your best alternative or your best solution for size, portability, and value. And uh, yeah, so let's do this. Right now, I'm recording on the front-facing camera of my iPhone just to give you an idea of what kind of video quality you can get with an iPhone. A lot of times, an iPhone is good enough. When does it start to fall apart? And why would it not serve in certain situations? Well, one thing is an iPhone doesn't have a front-facing screen. That is huge for being able to blog and effectively frame the shot and get a good idea of what you're, what you're filming. Now, another thing here that this camera is lacking, that this camera is not, is low light capabilities. Right now, I'm looking at this camera and it seems like the low light is just slightly better. Now, keep in mind, I am filming this on a small lens. It's a pancake lens. So it's not even like a lens that would take advantage of the capabilities of this camera. But even after we have switched in a very small time, you should be able to notice that you see how the bricks are kind of out of focus and they were not at the beginning of the video. That is because this camera has a bigger sensor than my iPhone. So the iPhone that I was just recording on has a sensor that is about that big. Now think of a sensor as like what your eye socket connects to like, and think of your eyes as a lens, right? So you're limited by having a very small thing that your eye socket connects to, or you'd be limited by having your eyes only halfway open. So that's how I'm going to explain aperture. Aperture, this is an aperture, right? So imagine, get a piece of paper, put a hole in it with a pen, and look out. Look around. Now, if you put a really small hole in it, your field of view will be limited. You will not be able to see that much from it. So right now, I'm on an f2.8 aperture. The aperture actually goes down with the bigger the aperture. So we're going to switch to a f1.4 aperture so you can get a feel for what that's working with. Okay, so now you can tell that the bricks behind me are really blurry, and I think that the light is just looking better in general. I think there's a lot more going on. Um, this is the effect of having a very wide aperture. The lens can open up very wide and bring in a lot of light. So that is where iPhones start to lose any kind of ability to compete with a professional or a dedicated camera. Um, this camera has a 1.7. This camera right here on the back of the iPhone, the main camera has a 1.7, F1.7, aperture on its lens why would this why would this not be able to do the same thing as this camera is so let's switch over to the iphone over here and see what kind of differences we're picking up on okay so now we are recording on the iphone uh on the rear camera i think i'm in frame i can't tell because there's no flip screen come on iphone put one on the back there people would love that but i can't actually tell if i'm in the shot or not I imagine that I am, but uh, the light was activated. So the camera automatically turns on the light in low light conditions. Why does this camera need a light and this camera does not? Because even though these have almost equivalent apertures, they are working on a smaller sensor. So I'm going to draw the approximate size of an iPhone of the sensor that we're recording on right now. Um, no, that's too big. Let me go a little bit smaller. So that right there is the approximate size of the sensor that we are recording on right now. So they, it does have a lens with a big aperture, but it, the lens is not the limiting factor. The small sensor size is. Now we have a sensor on this guy that's about that big. Now, if you can imagine having this much more light to work with than that, you can imagine how you would have a much more blurry depth of field because the depth of field can be achievable on an iPhone. For example, for example, as you can tell, the background is now blurred because we have a small object that the lens is focusing on. Now, why is it that we can have a blurry background when we're focusing on a small object, but when we focus on me, there isn't that big blurry bokeh, the blurry background. What has changed? Well, so essentially, we are working with a much smaller sensor size, right? We already discovered this. We're, we're working with a very small sensor. 
So we are able to achieve a blurred background because we do have a wide aperture on the lens on this iPhone. However, what we do not have is the uh, big sensor. So a big sensor allows more light to come in, therefore allowing bigger things to fit into the field of view and allowing that blurry background effect with even bigger subjects. So that is the main limitation of the iPhone and what I don't know how they're gonna fix until now. And that is why I recommend a Sony A5100 because it does allow you to have a big sensor size, you can put big lens on it, have a really blurry background, and have a wider field of view, all because it has a sensor that's about four times as big as your iPhone. And that's why I recommend, if you're going to get something besides your iPhone, I would recommend getting a sensor that is at least APS-C. So like APS-C is the step below the biggest sensor that you can make. So it's like 80% of having the biggest sensor possible, but it's more compact than anything that you can get with a full frame. Like this, the body of the, of the A5100, it's just so much more compact. You can get compact cameras like the Sony ZV-1 or the G7X2 or 3, but they will not have as big of a blurry background. It would be somewhat comparable to that, that with it, which is on an iPhone. So why would you make the effort to have an extra piece of equipment when you can just get 90% of the same effects from your iPhone? So I hope that this video has made clear why I recommend a seven-year-old camera. It's the smallest, most compact, and it also has the biggest sensor that you can get on the market. It is cheap. It's only $450. And it's not a big loss if you lose it. All together, this is actually cheaper than the iPhone that I'm recording on right now. If I wanted a full frame camera, I would at least need to spend $2,000 for the equivalent setup. And it would be a lot bigger. So this is the medium point between having a cell phone and a full frame camera that I think is a sweet spot for all vloggers. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. And if it hasn't, I'm sorry, I, I, I did the best I could. I had to make this video today. I just had to do it. Okay, enjoy, bye-bye.